Hello guys, welcome to Fire Racer Workshop and in today's video we're going to be checking out the BJT in common base configuration. Now the BJT in common base configuration is a really simple circuit and obviously I just saw that not a lot of videos were available on YouTube so I just decided it to make the tutorial for this particular experiment on RCAD and on your screen right now you can just see the circuit how well it looks like and right now you can see the simulation of that particular circuit so without further ado let's get started and those of you who are new to my channel you can also view the whole playlist for this particular like for, for all the btec second semester electronics device practicals so you can just see the link to the playlist in the description down below or click on the pop-up i button that's just over there so you can just check those videos out so and secondly, I'm not going to be explaining the theory behind this particular circuit. So if you want to learn about the theory, I'm just going to provide you with some really dope videos in the description box below. So do check out the description box below. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's just fire up our ORCAD software. I'm going to go with the ORCAD Design Peace Pies Professional. So over there, just click on it. I'm just going to create a new circuit. Okay, I'm just going to go to files, new project, and then I'm just going to type in BJT, common base. All right, I'm just going to click on OK, create new blank project and OK. Let's just take it, let's just give it some time to load up. Anyways. Okay, so let's just cross out the startup page. I don't know why do we even have the startup page at the first place. Click on the P. Now we're gonna be making the circuit with the 2N 4 times 2 N transistor. So this is an NPN BJT. And uh, let's just see where we can find this particular BJT. So right here, I guess. Uh, sorry, not the A, not the N. We are gonna go with the 2N 4 times 2 A transistor. So this one. You're gonna go with so double tap on this one okay so over here we have just got this transistor we're gonna rotate it all right and we are just gonna flip it horizontally so that the emitter is on the left hand side we need two resistors or analog double click on it one ratio will be placing right here one ratio will be placing right here we need two dc power supplies so vdc we're gonna tap in so one over here we're gonna place and one over here we're gonna place so for this particular one we're just gonna rotate it okay so this one has been rotated this one will be kept as it is i'm just gonna zoom into my circuit all right so this is all what you need what you also need is a ground so let's just go to this one over here zero capsym this is what we need we also need two vcc the voltage probes one over here and one over here okay we are all set now we can just assemble our circuit on this particular okay so i'm just gonna assemble my circuit real quick press on the w and let's just fire up everything We're gonna place one of the voltage probes right here. Just make sure that to place it just near this one. I'm sorry. So near so first of all, one is just gonna be directly connected to the emitter of the transistor and one is gonna be connected to the collector of the transistor. Now you can just identify the emitter of the transistor by this arrow right here. So this is the emitter and this one is the collector and this one is the base. This zero this is the reference voltage will be connected right here so this is the re zero so this is the ground of our circuit we're just gonna first of all let's just change the value for the resistor this one is gonna be 100 ohms and uh, similarly for this one as well r2 is also gonna be 100 ohms so just be careful to keep the values of both the resistors equal i'm gonna go with the 100 ohms one secondly let's just make this point right here we'll just call it so this one is gonna be the voltage so this one is going to be the voltage between the collector and the base. So let's just call it collector VCB. 
all right voltage between the collector and the base so vcb this one we're gonna call as vbe voltage base emitter so over there we're just gonna keep it as we've been all let's just change it to vbe as well or vbe let's just go with small v and e all right uh we're gonna change it to vcb and again we're gonna go with a small vc so we cb all right so we're all done over here so our circuit is just ready to roll and let's just see now uh, let's just go to the simulation profile you know create a new simulation profile let's just call it base um bgt common base cb that's it two because i guess i've just created the simulation profile only as well so over here the window has just popped up allowing us to change the simulation setting so in this particular experiment we are going to go with the dc sweep and we are also going to enable the secondary sweep so first of all in the primary sweep now we're going to first of all simulate the circuit to find out the input characteristics of this particular circuit so to find the input characteristics what you're going to do is we're going to sweep this voltage okay this voltage the vbe is just going to be swept okay and this voltage right here okay so we're going to move it at an interval so for example for we're gonna move it at an interval of five volts and we're gonna like obtain about six graphs six plots in the plotting window so let me just tell you how to do it first of all on the primary sweep we're gonna select the vbe this is the voltage source that we need to sweep start value is gonna be zero and value is gonna be five volts and increments i'm gonna be taking as 0.001 volts because it will just make our graph more precise and right here on the secondary sweep I'm sorry, actually this one, this is the voltage value, so this would be 0, 0 V, 0 V DC. I'm sorry guys, because I just messed up the name tag and all that stuff. And this one should be, this one should be V C B. Alright, so now we all set, otherwise we would have got an error and uh, something like that. Let's just go to secondary sweep and in secondary sweep we are going to select as, it as V C B. Alright. So VCB uh, will be the voltage source that we need to sweep in the secondary sweep. I'm going to go, first of all, we're going to start with the 0 volts value. Then we're going to go with 20 or let's just say 30. Okay, let's just first of all go with the 20 volts. So over here, we're going to obtain 5 graphs and increment of 5. So what will essentially happen? I'm just going to explain you in a brief. For the primary sweep, first of all, the start value will be 0. So first of all, this power supply will be at 0 volts and for 0 volts, this power supply will be swept from 0 to 5 volts at an increment of 0 0.001 volts. Then the secondary sweep will be activated and this one move to around 5 volts. So this power supply will become 5 volts. And for 5 volts, this will again be swept from 0 to 5 volts and so on and so forth. And therefore, we'll be obtaining about 6 graphs at 0, 5, 10, 15 and 20 volts. So let's just click on about I guess we'll obtain 5 graphs, not 6 graphs, I'm sorry. 5 graphs we'll be obtaining. Let's just click on apply and OK. Now we're gonna run the simulation. Okay. As you see over here, we've got the simulation has been completed. Let's just go to first of all plot and axis settings. So on the x axis, what we need is the voltage that we're getting between the base and the emitter. So VBE is what we need. All right. So we're gonna select VBE as an axis variable. Let's just disable everything else. And VBE is going to be our access variable. That's the VBE. All right. We're just going to hit on OK. OK. And the trace, what we need is the current that's flowing through the base. I'm sorry, current that's flowing through the emitter of the transistor. So that will be your IQE. So this will be the current that's just flowing through the emitter. Over here, you can see we have just obtained a plot. Now, this particular plot is in the third quadrant. Now, how to change that? We're just going to go to access settings again. And access variable, we can select as minus VBE. All right, and in the trace, let's just delete this trace first of all and add the trace again. Now, first of all, let's just type in a negative sign and then just like add this one. So, current that's flowing through the middle of the transistor right here. We have just obtained our beautiful traces. So, this is the input characteristics of this particular transistor. So, we are all done over here. We can also change the properties of the trace. And uh, let's just go with the color of yellow. And uh, we're gonna increase the width of the trace a bit. Alright, 
So this is our trace right here. So obviously these traces are just so close to one another that it's just gonna create a really thick line. So it's just better if you just select the thickness that's just low so that you can just see the individual traces. So this is how the input characteristics of this particular circuit looks like. And now let's just simulate a circuit for the output characteristics of this transistor. So we're gonna go to paste pies and edit simulation. So for the output characteristics, we're gonna be sweeping this particular voltage source in the primary sweep, that is the VCB. That's just the voltage source that's connected between the base and the collector of the transistor. We're gonna be sweeping it from minus 0.8. Now, please be careful to add the minus sign right here because the minus sign is just really important. Now, this is the reason why you'll get your graph in the saturation region and in the active region. You'll just, if you just select zero right here, you're only gonna get your graph in the active region. You won't be getting the saturation region. So make sure to include a negative value right here. You can either go with 1.2 volts or you can go with 0.8 volts. I'm gonna go with minus 0.8 volts. So I'm, you can go with a minus 0.2 volts as well, but I'm gonna go with 0.8 volts. We're gonna go up to 20 volts and in an increment, so the increment is all right. Now we're gonna go to secondary sweep and in the secondary sweep, we're gonna sweeping the value of this one. So VBE, we're gonna be sweeping. So right here, this is all set. And we're gonna be going up to five volts and an increment of one volt. Now I'm just gonna explain you in brief what will happen in the circuit. For example, first of all, our simulation will start from zero volts at this particular voltage source. And for zero volts, it's just gonna be sweeping this particular voltage source from a value of minus 0 0.8 to 20 volts. After it has all done, I mean, after the simulation has been completed and the values have been swept to 20 volts, it's just gonna go to secondary sweep again and it is just gonna increment the value by one. So right now, this voltage source will be at one volt and then it's just gonna sweep this particular voltage source from minus 0 0.8 to up to 20 volts again. And we're gonna, go, and therefore we'll be getting about six graphs in this particular experiment. So we'll be getting six graphs and let's just click on apply, okay. Now let's just open up the piece pies and right here in the plot first of all we're going to be changing the axis settings so this is important guys please just do change the axis settings in the x-axis what we need is we need the voltage between the collector and the base of the transistor so vcb is what we need we're going to be selecting vcb right here so vcb so this one will be selected okay hit on okay now go to trace and add trace so what we need is the current that's flowing through the collector of the transistor. So we're gonna select IC and whatever this is. So this is the current that's just flowing through the collector of the transistor. And right here, ta-da, we have got our plots. Over here you can see this particular region is called the active region of the transistor and this particular region is the saturation region. And right here, this is the cutoff region at which like the base uh, the base emitter voltage when it's zero volts so this is the uh, this is the cutoff region and over here you can see in the active region the current ain't increasing even if we are increasing the uh, the power of supply that's just connected to this particular the between the base and the collector so obviously this particular amplifiers actually can not amplify current so the base current is going to remain almost similar to the emitter current but the thing is that they can just amplify the voltage a lot a lot means a lot and these type of transistors i mean they can be used as common current like i'm um, constant current power sources so you can see that it's just providing us with a constant current even if we are increasing the voltage so that's it guys so this is the output characteristics and obviously if you need to change the properties you can do so just gonna go with the uh, yellow color with of this one and okay so you're all set with this one and um, over here you can also see that our graph is going well uh, in the negative region as well so it's just going well below zero volts so your voltage at collector base like at the ba uh, voltage between the collector and the base of the transistor is going in negative as well so that's why we just selected the negative value to just obtain this particular region otherwise what you would have obtained is these lines only and uh, this won't look good and this won't just tell you the volt story so that's why we just went with the chart value of 0 0.8 volts and this is just really important so that's it for today guys and i hope you like this video and if you need to learn more about this particular configuration and also even you, if you want to learn about the common emitter configuration which i have also covered in my video so you can just click on the pop-up i button to just check out the common emitter configuration 
of BJTs. So if you need to learn about any of this configuration, do check out the description box below because I have just linked a lot of stuff in the description box and there are some really cool videos that I've linked in the description box from which you'll just get this concept really easily and you'll just love those videos. And secondly, I'm gonna be uh, simulating the circuit in multi-sim as well and I'll just try to do it in Tinkercad as well. But on Tinkercad, obviously the circuit is just, it's, it's just gonna be really time consuming on Tinkercad because you have to just manually take all the readings and there are a lot of readings that you need to take for this particular experiment for the input as well as output characteristics so we're going to be simulating it on multi-sim for sure because so i hope you like this video if you like this video just smash the like button and just subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends and i'll see you in the next video so bye bye guys bye